And welcome to the Dad Advocacy Podcast. I'm Ryan. I am Tristan. And we are in different locations. <laughs> we are. Um, season two, episode two is what we're on right now. But I have uh, I have the consumption. <laughs> Got the itis. <laughs> the itis. That's what it is. <laughs> See, um, speaking of the itis, did you ever watch um, the Boondocks, the cartoon? Yeah, a little and- bit. Okay, so Grandpa creates this restaurant, right? And he, the restaurant is like literally, it's a bunch of tables and a bunch of beds, and you eat this random, all these amazing foods that are super fatty and super gross. And he calls it the itis because people fall asleep afterwards. Yep. Well, that's a thing. Super obese and whatever because everybody, the people can't stop eating there. Yeah. Amazing episode. Super fun. That was like the itis was actually talked about in the Chappelle Show episode too. Was it? Yeah, because it was like, there was a commercial, he made like a fake commercial for something and it was like, um, it was for ribs. Oh, it gotcha. Like, yeah, it was kind of funny. Like he's made this commercial, like it was like ribs would solve some of the world's problems. And they're like, I think I got the itis. He was like falling asleep. <laughs> and that's totally what it is. It's the itis. Um, gosh, I really, I really, for the, I don't know how long, ever since I've seen the episode, I wanted to create a Luther. And a Luther is Krispy Kreme, burger patty. Burger stuff, Krispy Kreme on the top. That's what you get. Didn't somebody do that, or was it KFC? So. Or was it KFC that did that and used chicken with donuts? I'm trying to remember. I don't somebody did that. I feel like the burger would be better because you get that sweet kind of. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm gonna have to do it. I really would have to do that. Maybe we just yeah, you just have to go buy a couple glazed donuts and then make a burger on your blackstone out back and. Yeah. We'll make like little flat ones though, so they get crispier yeah. on the edges and not not the thick ones I usually do. Yeah, or you could do like and try a couple of different types of donuts too. I mean, because mm-hmm. obviously every place has different donuts, so yeah. I mean, you can try Krispy Kreme and because they're a little bit more pillowy and soft. Where advocacy itis <laughs> sounds so like I'm... we're gonna need to be like sponsored by like diabetes medicine. <sighs> <after that>. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get that all guy to come on and be like, I've got the diabetes. <laughs> Wilford Brimley is now a partner with us in the advocacy podcast. <laughs> so awesome, though. <laughs> if you tried what we do, you may be entitled to financial compensation. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, we'd be sued everywhere. Yeah, you did advocate. what they told you to do. <laughs> exactly. Holy crap! It'd be crazy. <laughs> hey, so well, I watched. Um, this is the first time we've ever done this in separate locations, and it's it's, it's, it's weird kind of, and fun. They were weirding me out. Because I mean, like I can see you and I get to look at you when I'm talking to you now instead of like kind of looking, you know, at a screen to make sure we're doing good. Yeah. Um, but as people can tell, we've we kind of have a new setup a little bit. Um, just a little bit, by the way. I think a green screen's working, but I got a little green here. I don't know if I how to feel about that. We'll see what happens. Yeah, and I'm trying um, to hide my kids' Christmas presents back here. And it's a good thing he doesn't watch, huh? That's true. That's yeah. true. <laughs> pretty Owen's on YouTube watching us dad what are you doing what's what's that thing <laughs> what am I getting speaking of Christmas presents you know how I got that new dog right yeah so funny stories I, I come home I had to run an errand um yesterday and so I left her in the house like alone for 45 minutes I'd come back and there was wrapping paper by the front door like mm-hmm. Christmas wrapping paper I'm like okay what's this from <laughs> and then I recognized the wrapping paper and I got a little bit up further up the stairs. And then there was like some stuffing on the ground from the inside of something else. Okay. Um, my dog had found a present from Owen to me and decided to open it for me. Um, it was a pair of gloves and a, and a knitted hat and uh, she destroyed one of the gloves <laughs> and um, I was not happy, not thrilled, but yeah, no, it's a, I was really kind of, miffed about that and that's <coughs> dog has been frustrating me so i don't know it's so that would be super frustrating. randomness that i've been dealing with because if anybody has ideas on how to deal with dogs and training a dog that you rescue that's a total hood or at i'm all ears right now <laughs> i think that's the um you know like i was watching videos about actually training dogs and i don't know why but i was watching them randomly and there are so many people that get upset when you rub your dog's nose and it's pee. If it pees, I do it all the time. And are then, you not supposed to? I, I, I guess not. What? They're like, it does nothing for your dog. And I'm like, well, if your dog stops doing it, it works. Yeah. 
I was like, <laughs> the beatings will <laughs> will continue until morale improves. I kind of know. I mean, <laughs> like, it's like, like punishing your child almost, right? Like, if yeah. you don't punish your child, it doesn't learn what's right and what's wrong. Yeah. So how do you train your dog from peeing all over the carpet? I don't even understand what what steps you would take. I like what do you? Okay, replacement theory. Like, what do you do? Like, I mean, how? Cause I do let her out and everything. And like, she'll have an accident once in a while. Yeah. And maybe it's just cause she was kenneled for so long. I can tell that she's not used to like life outside of being behind bars essentially. Um, so it's kind of, you know, having those issues, but she's good at times when she wants to be, but sometimes it's just, she's lazy. <laughs> I don't know. I I'm just trying to figure it out. Cause once a dog goes somewhere, that's it marking its spot. So it'll keep going there. Yeah. You can't, I'm lost, man. I was watching the video. And I'm like, I don't even understand what, what I'm supposed to do at this point. Yeah, because the last time she went inside and I had to clean it and I rubbed her nose in it, she hasn't gone back in that spot since. It, it works. Absolutely yeah. works. I mean, she got swatted with a with a shoe with a slipper, but <laughs> too. But I mean, it was like, you know, held her nose in it until she was stopped fighting me too. Like I literally waited until she submitted and then then I finally let her go. But yeah, I don't know. Does that make me a jerk? I don't know. <laughs> like that's the way I was raised with dogs, and that's how I've done it in the past. No, I got you. I think it's that people see things as too cute, and it's yeah. so cute. I don't want to. I don't want to do anything mean potentially to it. Yeah, I don't want to. But if you watch uh, the animal hierarchy, what does the, the head wolf do? Yeah, it beats the crap out of other animal and beats the crap out of him. <laughs> submit, and that other animal is like, oh, okay, I, I understand my place. Yeah, especially with the other males, it rolls the other males until they're almost dead, and then it lets off, and then they don't have that problem anymore. Disclaimer, Dad, because he does not want you beating your dog into submission. No, we're not uh, sponsored by uh, my Michael Vick. Yeah, we, we're, not, we're not for this, but we're having a conversation, so. Yeah. <laughs> I like I said, I'm all ears for training. Like, I really am, like, because she's a sweet dog, and, like, my kid loves her, and she loves my son, but. Oh, yeah. Like, it's just, there's some frustrating habits that I don't, I don't know how to break. I've watched so many stinking videos of Caesar Milan and that dude that does like the other happy dog happy rescue or whatever, whatever it is. And, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I've tried it all. So As you just, keep, just keep working. I mean, she's young. That's really what it is. You know, keep working on it. Yeah. There's some puppy there still. And I realize oh, that. Dude, yeah. Big time. So yeah. have you watched any good movies lately? Did you go see Ghostbusters yet first? I haven't. That was on our I might actually be doing it tonight, possibly. So so freaking good. Make it happen. Just yeah. you gotta trust me in this one. Make it happen. I think that's that might be on our list of things to do this evening. So so if you if you don't want to go out on Netflix, there's a movie called A Boy Called Christmas. Okay. And it's dude, it, it's a really good movie, actually. Uh, it's a new take on Christmas, right? A Christmas tale. Yeah. So a young boy, he sets out on a journey to find his dad. Um, Cause his dad was a bunch of people were brought in in front of the King and the King said, look, go find us hope. So dad's like, son, stay home. I'm going to go find hope. Well, the son gets left home and eventually the, the kid goes, no, I, I'm going to go find my dad. I'm going to go help him because he finds a hidden map that his mother left to find elves. Hmm. Right. Dude. It's tragic. It's heartfelt. Dude, it's fun. There's a really cool twist at the end. You're tired already. I must be boring Dude, you. No, I didn't drink enough. This is what's fun about video. I know. Dude, that's really bad, too, wasn't it? <laughs> I realized I'm like, oh, yeah, we're recording. Um, no picking um, our nose, no plucking nose hair. Dude, like, no, like, it's just from shoveling all that dang snow today. I'm like, just kind of oh, yeah. like, uh, yeah. No, it's I got you there. Yeah. So, so, yeah, but it was really, there was a great twist at the end. Um, Man, it's it's just a really good movie. Like it was surprising how good it was, and how enjoyable the entire the entire thing was. So, what was the? Did you ever see the Christmas movie? Um, I know it was like co-funded by Glenn Beck um, about Santa Claus, and I can't remember the name. Was it Klaus or Claus or something like that? But L A U S cartoon. Yeah, I don't know if it's the mail carrier. Yeah. Oh, dude, that was really good. Also. Okay, I need to see it. Yeah. That's on Netflix too. No, I, I mean, I'm all about watching Christmas movies. So I, I love, yeah. I love watching them. Cause it was like the original, it had something to do with, um, there was another one that came out too, that was about Santa. Maybe it's a book. I don't know, but it was about Santa Claus being an individual of just like 
having a huge heart. And so his lore of how big, how generous he was to people and how he gave to others, like this is way back when, uh, it, it turned and propagated into the story of Santa Claus. Like that was because he was uh, originally, I think he was a woodworker, whatever, did create toys for kids and gave them out. Yeah. Um, and I think that's that's where we kind of get a lot of this stuff. And then, every, of course, everything's fantasized sure. or fantastical sized and fantastic. Yeah. What's the word? What am I looking for? Fantasized. I feel like that's dirty, though. I don't fantasize about Santa Claus. Maybe oh, no. yeah, it is the wrong word. I don't know. <laughs> sensationalized? I don't know. Like... Yeah, sensationalized. There we go. That's a good word. <laughs> Yeah, that's perfect. It's like when you tell a story. Yeah, your own twist. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah fantasy. I'm not fantasizing about Santa Claus. Yeah. Okay. Um. Do you have um? I like to watch Christmas movies like during during December, right? Sure. Do you have any Christmas songs that you like to listen to? Um, I know that my son has Christmas songs that he likes to listen to. There are some that like, um, Run Run Rudolph. Well, that's a great one. He loves, especially the Chuck Berry version. Is it? I thought it was just a Beach Boys version. Uh, the Chuck Berry version is my favorite. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, I actually like. Um, oh gosh. Um, Ray Charles Christmas album is really good. I was not even aware. Yeah, there, there's some out there. It's super good. Um, I, what is like couples like Santa on my mind? Uh, I don't know. Like he just does covers of Christmas music. <laughs> really um, just I like his style of music around the holidays. Yep. It's kind of laid back, and um, but I do like. <laughs> dude, one is on my list, and people make fun of me. But Gene Autry's version of "Here Comes Santa Claus" is like one of my all-time favorites. Wow. And well, it's also the part if you watch uh, Christmas Vacation, mm-hmm. um, where he's has the SWAT team show up and the Chicago or the police department shows up on the yep. front yard. That's what's playing in the background. And that kind of like, I don't know. It's, you know, it's not Christmas until the SWAT team shows up to Gene Autry's. I mean, this is family. just telling how much of an old soul you are. That's right. Are you like 95? What's going on with you? <laughs> um, like, I do like the, the Peanuts, like, you know, Charlie Brown Christmas um, <laughs> soundtrack's really good. I don't know. Just like okay. stuff that I listen to. I'm trying to think of. One of my know? favorites is the uh, Mannheim Steamroller Christmas. Okay. Flip and love their version of Carol of the Bells. And anybody that's watched the movie Scrooged mm-hmm. will know the epic intro to that. It's just, it's fantastic. Like it is, it is amazing. Um, August Burns Red does a version of Carol of the Bells that is, I think that's who does it, but it's freaking awesome. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, there's another band that's out there. Um, Small Town Titans. They're like they started on YouTube, but they do a version of the of Mr. Grinch. That's fantastic. It's, a, it's okay. a a metal version of Mr. Grinch. Did I, yeah, I've heard them. They, they, I haven't heard that song, but I've heard them, and that'd be fantastic. It's awesome. Like, so if you get a chance to go, you know, I'll put it on our Facebook page because it's great. Um, and uh, it made my kid kind of appreciate metal, which was kind of funny. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> so fun all the time now. Um, yeah, there's a few songs out there that I do dig. I generally don't get into christmas music to be honest with you um so there's just a few like nuggets and sprinklings out yeah. there that i dig but i don't know it all starts to sound the same after a while i did i totally agree um i was actually listening to 90s on nine on xm right just driving around with my son and they started playing like all the christmasy crap and Mariah like Curry. Oh, oh they were so it was so awful tlc christmas and like freaking yeah. what was it with um Lucy Left Eye Lopez. Was that TLC or was that? It's TLC. Yeah, it was just, there was, they're so bad, so bad. And I was like, no, I can't handle this. So we went to 80s on eight, right? And they're like, what's that? It's more of the same. Basically, yeah. But they were like, hey, have you heard this one, right? And, or have you thought of this one? And it was Pat Benatar. Yeah. And I'm like, I have never heard this song my entire life ever. And I I look at it and I go, what is the title? Because it's not good. I don't yeah. even know how to the radio. I really can't figure it out. The title of the song is called Sex is a Weapon. And so in my head, I'm thinking like, what else? It, she's, she did Love's a Battlefield also. Hmm. So I look at Dylan, who's sitting next to me because we're driving around. And I go, dude, Pat Benatar did Love's a Battlefield. Sex is a Weapon. It's like one of her hidden mysterious like, songs out there. Oral is an airstrike. 
It's up. I mean, you know, because it comes down on you. Dude. I mean, it. it I, don't, I don't know. Oh, I, it maybe it's just me, but it seems like she's running out of material. Oh, dude, that's a. Because then, like, yeah, you come up with one for guerrilla warfare. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Be like anal or something, I guess. Oh, dude, come I on. Apologize. I'm sorry, Ryan's mom. I'm sorry, Ryan's mom. Now you can see me. I'm genuine. I'm oh, really sorry, dude. I, I'm trying to help. This won't go there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking more of like emotional stuff, but yeah, oh. okay. <laughs> it was Pat Benatar, so it had to be written by somebody else because Pat Benatar, it seems like nothing is emotional, it's all. There's a trend. Clearly, there's a trend. Well, this is some angry <laughs> violence. Seriously. Okay. Let's let's be let's be serious. Ready yeah. for this? Yeah. Dude, how long do you wear your or use your undies? Like before washing them, or like, oh, like okay. Well, man, we wear them for daily. You gotta I mean... put them on, <laughs> and then you roll them inside out, right? And then you put them back on. No. And then you can rotate them, and put them on. Put the and then inside out and put them on. That no, that'd be certain. so no, dude. No, no. Gross, just wear them one time. Okay, okay. Clearly they're being washed regularly, right? Yes. But at what point Clearly. in time do you throw them away? It depends. Or do you donate them? Um, I don't donate underwear. I mean, there's donated stuff I see at Goodwill often when I go. Who would wear, wear used underwear? I don't I mean I don't know how to feel about that. Ugh. Where does that stuff come from? Like, he was like, here's my lingerie. Ugh. And then the person was like, oh, we're going to clean it and put it on the shelf also. Make it look all sexy. Oh, but we washed it. It's like, no. I don't care how many times you wash it. Yeah. If, Forever if, unclean. It's awful. <laughs> like, if people want to go good willing, they should always always look for, like, lingerie and stuff. Because it's just that you can't even fathom the thought process behind that. That's just. You, that's gross. You know, that's no, that's a no. Yeah. That's okay. Gross. All right. Right. So uh, but no, I, uh, how, long, how long before you throw it away? What do you, what's, what's your gauge? So I think it, I mean, for me, it's when it starts to lose it, it it's structural <laughs> integrity. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Let me tell you my story. Cause I, if it has holes, it's been too long. It's been too long. Like that. So that that's for, for my socks. If there's a hole, it's gone. Yep. I know I can sew, but I mean, it's whatever. It sucks. I don't care. Um, and I probably should sew and make them last longer and be frugal, but I, it's whatever. I have underwear that I love, right? I love the little pouchy underwear. Um, and I was at the gym the other day with my son and we're, we're working out because he needed to get some stress relief. And we're on the treadmill and we're walking. And I'm wearing my one, one pair of my favorite underwear. And literally, I get to start starting to fire on my leg hair. Okay. Apparently, I teared up a little bit thinking about it. I'm sorry. Apparently, my favorite pair. The the four holes in my can I say genital region? Groin. My sackle area. Gr- under groin. My lower groin. Under area. My thumb upper, under upper area. groin. Upper groin. Yes. Upper. No, it was lower for sure. It was lower area. Okay. My thumb under area. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> the hair is had intertwined i think and then with the s- single strands of Fabric. underwear hole isms you know that was held together yeah um let's see it went too long that yeah hi cat i sit down um the single strands of hair they started pilling together so every time i would walk right my legs would stretch it would rip out a section from my leg and from my I'm crying again. Hold on. It really had moved me. Uh, and at that point, I was like, now I got to throw them away. Yeah. Is it just me or is, or is it? I think you waited too long. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> clearly I made like. the wrong decision when I was looking. Uh, at yeah. Them. Like I said, when it loses structural integrity, usually they're gone. Um, it depends on the kind that they are, too. Some of them, like if you wear like sport boxer briefs, yep. um, they don't necessarily make holes. Especially if they're like moisture wicking type. But the, all I wear is boxer briefs, though. What's that? All I wear is boxer briefs. So like the moisture wicking kind, like they never make holes for me. Like usually it just gets to the point where like you can start like they get like I don't want to say translucent, but like <laughs> I don't know. Pretty soon <laughs> the materials like materials. wear on the 
the material's wearing away and then it's like all right you're out of here i got my ting ting <laughs> um it's a joe coy kickback sorry no that's well so i don't wear moisture wicking i cotton feels better okay moisture wicking like socks they don't i don't know they, they're gross my feet don't smell right yeah. but if i wear moisture wicking socks then they do hmm doesn't make any sense. I don't care. I like, I mean, I like cotton socks when you're on. I usually wear like the low no shows, but um, like, I don't want to say moisture. They're like more athletic type material, like the, the stretch cotton or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They just fit. Because you got that booty to hold it up? Dude, yeah. You got like those, I'm in the thick thigh game. Right? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I totally, I get H-I-C-C, baby. And when you're. Like with a double C, you got to take care of that business. That's all. I get it. I get it. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I bought these underwear with magnets in it once, right? Some Asian thing. And I was like, cool. I'm gonna, I like trying out random stuff. You know me. I'm, I'm just ridiculous like that. So I buy the triple XL. Asia. I mean, they're like, they're, they're they still go little. buy American sizes though, don't they? They didn't have any right. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll triple XL. That should be okay. I mean, I'm like a large medium, right? Or medium or to large in between ish, depending on how, how my booty feels that day, right? Sure. Um, and I get them, no joke. I couldn't stick my leg through it. What? I had to give it to my kids and they love them. They love them. Really? But I had to give it to my kids. That's triple X you had to give to your kids. Triple X it was ridiculous. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. How, about, how long do you keep razor blades before you throw it away? I rarely use razors. The only time I ever use them no. is like, I think like cleaning up either right in here or sometimes like knocking down right in there. You got to take care of that business, you know? Yeah. yeah. Up here. Want, nobody wants a unibrow. Well, nobody wants the freaking Captain Hook that goes like up here, you know, like yeah. freaking Hook the movie. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I use like an electric razor for mostly everything, but. Right. Um, so I'll, I'll use mine for like six months to nine months. Yeah, no, dude, I've got one probably I've had for a year. <laughs> so, I mean, like, like, let's be honest. I haven't. I feel, like, I feel like razor blades, you like use it and it gets to the point where it gets rough. And if you just get past that section, it gets perfect again. Yeah. Like self sharpens. And I never go with anything that has more than four blades on it. No. Um, and I mean, I know there's, there's hype around a lot of stuff. Like, oh, the more blades, the better. Well, it's that if there's not enough gap in the actual blades, Everything gets clogged there. So you're just clogging your pores as you go back over it, creating a, word, yeah. a bad shave. Or you put more hair inside of it and then you skip yeah. those blades because the hair blocks the blade. Yep. Right. So, I mean, for me, like, if you're talking like blades, Mach 3 is probably perfect. And <laughs> girls, the Saturday Night Night Live skit about this. It was like the Mach, was like Mach 3. 15, I remember that. <laughs> skin was coming off. It's like, yeah, taking off the first and second layer of skin. The yeah. smoothest shave ever. <laughs> I, I taught my daughter, I was like, look, you know what? I mean, I know your legs break out if you shave. I said, go to a blade that has only three, three or four max. And she did. And everything turned out better. And I'm like, that's, that's why you are clogging your pores back up with the gross stuff. You don't want to do that. Yep. <clears throat> Random insight from a single dad. <laughs> Talk about. Okay. What do you want to hear about? Uh, emotional abuse and razors. <laughs> yep. I'll teach you all my tricks. I promise. Glowing skin. Get patriot men's hand cream and rub it in your forehead and the wrinkles go away dude, well, okay it's take a while but it'll eventually happen the hand to hand combat cream is legit oh dude it's my yeah. favorite yeah i use it i on love everything. it i use it on like eczema and it goes away within usually like six hours there's something about, i think it's the actual i think they use like uh bees bees wax yeah wax in there and i think that's i mean it's really beneficial so yeah how about this okay so Fat Amy coconut, and coconut oils in there too. Oh yeah, well I mean that's that's um that's really good for you anyway. But yeah, so Fat Amy, dude, Rebel Wilson. Yeah, she, she lost seventy seven pounds. Dude, she lost like a, a middle school child. <clears throat> she, I'm blown away. I mean that's like I know this is old news, of course, but yeah, dude, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah, she doesn't look like sickly waif like no. She, she looks healthy. She looks yeah. like, like she just was like, you know what? I want to be healthy. And the crazy part is like, I, I didn't really care initially. I was like, all right, whatever. But she's gotten so much pushback about losing weight and how she should have kept the weight on because she had this, she had her entire career set up. You know, all that. 
And I'm thinking like, wow, you know, what, what really motivated her? So she finally did an interview and she was like, I decided that I could be more healthy. I was not healthy. And she put her health over her career. How well, that was like that? Jonah Hill got ripped for like getting yoked. Oh, dude, he looks great. I know. He looks awesome. Yeah. Like, dude, people were like, he hasn't gotten in big, a big role since he like got jacked. It, it, are, they black ball, are, like, are they getting blackballed for taking care of themselves? No, I, I think that they, you get pigeonholed in these, these roles yeah. that you're like, oh, this is who you are. That's all you can do. Because they're, they're like, look, you can be fit and attractive and have that kind of role for everything. Or you can be kind of the obese, fat, fluffy friend that's nerdy or whatever on the backside, but there's no in between. Or you can be Christian Bale and be all of them. Oh, dude, he's, holy crap, dude. Like, dude, he's I'm in the mechanic, crack, he's right? played a crackhead and he's played like an obese, overweight Dick Cheney. It's amazing. <laughs> like over the top. Amazing. Look yeah. at him. Who was the dude that did? Um, I am Sparta 300. What's his face? He was also in uh, uh, Phantom of the Opera. He was the Phantom. Uh, I like uh, his name. All right. Oh, man. I can't remember it. Someone to my we all know who I'm talking about. King Leonidas, but yeah, I know. Yeah, um, that's right? I mean, he he gained a ton of weight for a bunch of his roles. Yeah. It, it's just, it's amazing. But I mean, like, the, the cool part is like, I think that I, I imagine her cholesterol levels, when she weighed whatever she weighed, if she lost 77 pounds, she's probably, I would say, at least a buck 50 right now, buck 60. Yeah. Minimum, right? I um, don't know how tall she is, that too. That's the thing. So, like, yeah. Yeah, she didn't, she didn't go toothpick. She looks... Honestly, it was weird because I was seeing her from the side. She kind of looks like Daryl Hannah. Yeah. It's, it's really yeah. interesting. I can totally see that. And then I was, I was watching Mr. Destiny last night, a classic movie most people forget about. Um, it's Christmassy-ish, sort of. But he, um, Rene Russo? Rene Zellweger? No, I think it's, it's the Rene Russo. Rene Russo is the one that was... I mean, uh, she was in Major League. <laughs> That's the girl. And a lot of stuff. I, it's one of the, I think it's one of the, whatever. Well, could have been Michelle Pfeiffer, maybe? No. I don't know. Though. Renee it's Russo and Michelle Pfeiffer look the same anyway. There's so many actresses that look identical. But I was looking at her, and she's super young in this one. And she looks like, well, I guess this is backwards. Drew Barrymore looks like her, if that makes sense. Because Renee's older, I think, or Michelle or whoever it was. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you get a chance, look it up because it's really intriguing. I was like, I, I couldn't, I couldn't not see it, so it kept screwing me up watching the movie. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, it's like there's other guys like anybody bald now looks like Bill Burr. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that. Hundred percent for sure. <laughs> like Bill Burr looks like he could be a balder version of Ron Howard's brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, now we're gonna get like hate mail or something from Bill Burr. Maybe. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> Bill, we'll have you on. We'll talk about it. He's funny. I'll give him that. So. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I know that you were talking about candy earlier because I was eating M and M's before the show started. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite candy? My favorite candy is Snickers. You're so. Now we, so curious, I, okay. I love the hundred gram bar. Okay. Love it. That's great. Especially I love frozen, it. by the way. Underrated frozen. Oh, totally underrated. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really, I'm not quite sure, honestly, how I feel about it because Snickers is one of my favorites. Um, and it truly, it satisfies. Right. hundred <laughs> grand. I want to eat all of them. Does it keep you from turning into Joe Pesci? Every single time, dude. <laughs> Every single time. Um, but yeah, so, so the funny part, I'm out shopping. I'm doing Christmas stuff. I found a one pound Snickers bar. That's a massive Snickers bar. To put it in perspective, it's like a child's arm. It, it's it's a it's a big mofo, dude. It is eight point six times larger. I did the math. It's effing huge. <laughs> like, so I bought one. I'm never gonna eat it. <laughs> so I, I, I bought it. <laughs> I, I will never. Yeah, I know. I had to. It was a ten dollar Snickers bar. So now I have diabetes. <laughs> Yeah, but I will never eat it because it's just, I mean, it's, it's massive. It's, it's, I guess you're supposed to slice it up and share it. And I'm like, well, that's stupid. Um, sure that's greedy. Yeah. But it's, okay. it is ridiculous how huge this thing is. It's like, Dude, do you what? ever share a Twix? No. Ever? Well, uh, there's not much to a Twix. Yeah. There's, so there's a few bars, but why would you share that? 
Buy yeah. two of them. Like, could you imagine buying a giant Reese's peanut butter cup, like the size of an actual pie and just slicing slices out of it? So I bought, there's, there's Reese's peanut butter cups that you can buy that come in half pound sizes. Each one's half pound. So it's a full pound. And it was good, sort of. The chocolate was way too thick. Okay. So you like, you bite it and it breaks the entire thing. Um, I loved the Reese's that had the cookie inside of it. Yeah. I feel like if they, if they made a pie that was like Oreo cookie crust with Reese's filling, Ooh, I'm see, that could be solid. That could be total. Or, or, or like a graham cracker crust or like. You need that chocolate though to make it Reese's, right? Yeah. But no, the graham cracker up. crust inside of the chocolate casing, like well, that'd be interesting. Yeah, I'd be on it. You need it. It'd be thin. It'd have to be the, and it'd have to be thin enough to make it work. You know, because yeah. that'd be the hard part. Or crunchy, yeah. But the cookie would be great too. I don't know. Like, oh, yeah. dude, it'd be so good. <sighs> I'm trying to watch my girlish figure. Um, I'm, I'm trying to stay away good. from all these candy things. I'll eat my M M&M. and M. Yeah, eat your M and M's. <laughs> I have some of those uh, the popcorn ones around here somewhere, but I'm I'm not gonna eat it. I'm sick. I'm drinking my tonic water that seems to always make me feel better. Um, I've got, I've got a coffee here. My, you'll shoot your eye out mug. So at church, they get at men's breakfast. They gave away a red rider BB gun to <coughs> at men's awesome. breakfast last week. And I think it got shouted about seven times of don't shoot your eye out kid. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And so that was actually one of the first presents I got my kids after they really enjoyed watching um, a Christmas story. Okay. They both got one. And then I didn't realize they're spring loaded. Yep. It just, it lobs them. It doesn't even shoot them right. It just, boink, it lobs it out. Yeah. Like, I remember getting my first pump action. Like, you had to pump it like six time BB gun. Mm -hmm. And you can like, but if you pumped it too much, you, it would like blow out the air, the air canister thing in it. I think we pumped ours like 13 times or whatever, and it never blew up. Really? I, I never went further. It was I went like 15 and I blew the gun up. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't shoot anymore. <laughs> my, uh, my buddy, Mike Smith and I, we would, I spent the nice house and he had one. And so we'd pump the hell out of it and get in our biggest, fluffiest jacket and shoot each other <laughs> and see if it would hurt. Dude, we, we left so many welts in each other. It was so much fun. Dude. <laughs> so much fun. So funny story, right? I had that BB gun. And I had made a target and I put a piece of plywood behind it. Mm -hmm. And so I was like in my driveway had made like a little like sniper hide for me and my BB gun to where I was like shooting at the fake deer that I'd crudely drawn on a piece of paper to put over this board. And I'm not joking you. I shot that thing and it ricocheted and came straight back and hit me right next to my what? eye. What? I was like, yeah. I was just like, I'm not going to tell my mom. You totally <laughs> did it. You're going to poke your eye out. Yeah. So she was like, what happened to your eye? And I was like, I poked myself with a stick. <laughs> that's a good, that's a safe one. That's much better than the, uh, the ice crystal or the ice falling on your eye. Yeah. What was it? You know, the, what was it? A uh, icicle? Yep. Yeah. No, I, I was playing in the bushes and I got poked in the eye with a stick. Oh, okay. Mm, <laughs> no question. That's easy enough. Yeah, exactly. Conversation over. No, I had literally almost put my eye out <laughs> <laughs> so i don't know i don't know if you can see this this is my uh this is my charlie brown doctor who christmas shirt it's one of my favorites the tardis we got the tardis and the dialects i don't there right there mm -hmm. as a snowman i just i love it it's kind of cool though because if you think about it so every time the doctor changes if you're nerdy like me it usually happens on a Christmas. There's always a Christmas special where it happens. Well, there's always some Christmas thing that happens. So it's an, it's an appropriate shirt. My mom had well, to it because she knows I, I love both of them. I'm going to pose a question outside of our show notes. Okay. If you could time travel or travel into any Christmas movie, what would it be? Oh, my gosh. It's a good question, right? A Christmas movie. Any Christmas movie you want, you could be a part of, you could travel into, which one would it be? Animated or real life? I don't know. I can't even think of anything. Do you have anything? I mean, a Santa Claus would be kind of cool. The Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Okay. Nothing too crazy happens there. So you yeah. wouldn't. I mean, I wouldn't go on a Die Hard because I, you know, I mean, no, no, uh, 
Hans Gruber. No. Um, <laughs> trying to think. Oh, dude. Speaking of Hans Gruber, you know yeah. that scene where where he drops off the edge of the building. Yeah. That was uh that wasn't faked. His reaction was real. Really. Yeah, because he didn't realize that they were going to do it. Oh, really? They just let him go. But obviously, stunt wise, like into it. I mean, he was he was protected, yeah. but he wasn't ready for it. So when he dropped, he dropped, and he was just like, "That was him freaking the hell out." <laughs> How cool is that? That's awesome. I didn't know that. That was yeah. He actually did all of his own stunts in that because that was one of his first movies, also. Detective McLean. Yeah, no. Um, probably one of my all-time underrated favorite actors, by the way. Um, no, I'm trying to think like what Christmas movie I'd go into. I feel like I want one where there's a bunch of like candy and crap. Dude, and just Home Alone too would be kind of or Home Alone. Are you okay? So if if you're in Home Alone though, are you in the house with him? Yeah, I'm setting all the booby traps. Oh, so you're the main character. Yeah, I'm with Kevin. Oh, okay, so you're just like t- two kids tag teaming the. the okay, so of, if that's the case. Mary. Okay, so you're you're kind of the co-person. Um, yeah. I'm using live ammunition, though, not a BB gun, but yeah. Awesome. <laughs> they busted and you've got your AR. I found Kevin. I found Kevin's dad 357 Magnum under the bed. Game over. It's all done. Yeah. It was in Michigan, though. And they've got... It was... No, it was in Chicago. So you couldn't have that. Yeah. Never mind. I thought it was in... No, the actual house, so I thought it was in Michigan. Like the real, real I'm house. I'm pretty sure it's in a suburb of Chicago. Hmm. Okay. I don't, I don't know how their stay on the ground laws work there, so I'm not sure. Probably not good because of they have a law against concealed carry in the state of Illinois. So, yeah, I would say probably you wouldn't be terribly safe. Interesting, yeah. <laughs> I'd be facing a uh, jury. Um, Elf would be kind of funny. It would be, but it'd also get really annoying really fast. Really fast, dude. Like, I'd want to punch the elf. <laughs> I I thought, like, not think about that. I, I it's not even a thought I've even had. Like, I don't know what I would do. It's a deep question. Yeah, <laughs> um, listeners, if you have anything, let us know. Put it, put some comments in there. Like, see uh, what would you be part of if you were the co-star. If you were to teleport or put yourself in any Christmas movie, um, yeah, Charlie Brown, and I'd tell them all to quit being jerks. <laughs> Is, is there a movie you wouldn't want to teleport into? Uh, I would not want to be part of the Griswold family. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Everything's always jacked up for them. Dude, cousin Eddie's a train wreck. Uh, Aunt Marge. Or Mar- yeah, is it Marge? Or Margo? Trying yep. to remember. What, was, what was the one where the girl's like, my dad says I kiss the best? Was that in... Uh, that wasn't one of the National Lampoon's ones, but it was. Like, it was. was. It was it like Vegas Vacation. Kids. Was it Vegas Vacation? It, it was. It was one of those ones. Yeah. No, it wasn't. Her dad said it. the The high school teacher or the counselor said it. Something like oh. that. Yeah, I'm trying to remember now. I can't. Those movies are great, dude. I'm gonna have to watch those back to back. I think. Just make a day out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Go hey, European, so, European to Christmas to Vegas. I was watching, gosh, I was watching something that was making me think about PTSD and um, war vets and, and, uh, and the draft, right? Yeah. So we had, we had multiple wars happen back to back for the most part, up to Vietnam-ish, right? Yeah, because you go World War One to two to Korea to Vietnam. And then we, I know we continue on beyond that, but like, I was thinking about it and we there were 2.2 million men drafted for Vietnam alone. Right for v- yeah. alone, I can't imagine before that how many were drafted. It's, it's got to be just millions upon millions of people, right? Yeah. So of those people that came back home, that were married, because most got married right before they left, right? Yeah. They got dear John letters or whatever. Imagine that who stayed married and came back, what they brought back home with them, dealing with nightmares, flashbacks, I mean depression. You feel lonely no matter what. Um, I'm clearly drug and alcohol abuse, right? Yeah. And eventually suicide, because that's that's really how the path it went down for most everybody. Do you think that because a lot of these men left these relationships because they thought they might harm their family from waking up in the middle of the night having a flashback, or because they, they were physical with their wife for some random reason, do you think that helped create 
a bias in the courts against fathers? That's a great question. Um, I think there's probably you could add to that too of um, children being products of the homes of individuals that may have came back from World War II or or Korea and um, were harder on their kids too because of that. Yeah. And more than likely, they continued that cycle. Um, they perpetuated leaving. the cycle, yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of what I was thinking. I don't think it's out of the question to think that that's a possibility. Um, yeah, no, I mean, it's just... <clears throat> I think there's a little bit more to it, too, of just the peace, love, harmony movement had an effect on the family, too, like on the nuclear family. Um, yeah. It's like, oh, you, just, you know, it's okay. I mean, everybody just love everybody, you know? You know Makes you, sense. To be Jackie Moon, everybody love everybody. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I mean, and I agree with that. I just, uh, I just wonder if, if the, the main one was, you know, is because the fathers left, the courts kind of got it in their head. Hey, you know what? Yeah, the moms take them to the cause because she was the one that didn't have the issues. You wouldn't want a child with a father that had those issues. Yeah, and I think you know, I mean, absent dads weren't. I don't want to say. It wasn't uncommon back then. I mean, it was uncommon back then, though, now that I think about it. It was big time until the draft, right? Then it yeah. was moms at home, literally doing even, everything. Even going into the African, I mean, we talked to it with Kenneth, but like the African-American community, you know, the, the, the two-parent household, it was until like at least like the early 80s, you know, it was like 76% of all Black families were, you know, a two-parent household um, through the 70s and into the 80s, and then things changed. Um, I think, you know, we did a crackdown, like, honestly, like to look at it too, doesn't mean that they were healthy families. No, um, because I mean, and even if you, I don't think it matters what skin color, like there were families, I think the divorce rate was lower back then, but it didn't mean the healthy, the families were any healthier. I think there may have been more that. abuse at home. There may have been more alcoholism, substance abuse and, and such too. But well, I think, I think part of that also is that. Um, the second you get married, now you've got multiple incomes. Mm -hmm. And and if you're on the lower end of income, you lose those benefits from the government. Yeah. There's a million starving blue, a blue a collar people out there. Subsidies for being a single parent, especially yeah. a single mother. So the government is, is, is quite literally promoting the fact that they don't want, you know, married households. Yeah. There's no benefit. Why the uh, waif state. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, if there's no benefit, why would you? And at that point, then why stay together? No, and you can throw in the, the conversation about, you know, the interruption from Planned Parenthood and a bunch of other stuff, too. Like, I mean, that, that all enters the picture and it disrupts. And I know this is going to start working towards our actual topic, but um, no, I mean, bringing up the PTSD and everything else with, with the, I think that there's a lot of factors in that. But I think that's one very large factor, I'm sure, to why dads get, <coughs> I mean, let's be honest, like, you know, I, I made a post about it just because of, you know, it's, and Kenneth talked about it. I mean, we're kind of beating the same drum that we did in our last episode, but um, dads do, you know, face a lot of uphill battle right off the bat and yeah. in, in custody cases and with the kids. And, um, you know, that really started, I, I mean, I want to say probably in the sixties for sure. And that, that makes sense in the timeline. Yeah. Totally does. So, I mean, it wouldn't match up. I mean, they start favoring moms because of being more tender hearted. I don't know. Like if we're, if the ability for mom to remarry versus dad. I don't know. Well, that, and I mean, they didn't draft moms. Mom said no PTSD. They had no issues like that. And if the father is out there dealing with his, his issues, having to stay out in the bush because he's having flashbacks all the time. Like, let's be real. Where would you, I mean, where would you want the kids? Yeah. environment where the guy the dad might freak out one night and kill everybody in the house because you know he thinks he's back in nom or in the house with a mom who's secure and, and strong and not worried about that you know and we still had back then though i mean they were still doing lobotomies and stuff like that so hey. <laughs> you talk about you know progressions within things and with medical responses to mental health you know if we had more knowledge about mental health that we have now if we would have had it then you know how many families could have been repaired before they even became broken? I mean, the shock therapy was okay back then. Yeah. I mean, I, like, who made this stuff up? Like what? That's ridiculous. Special schools for kids that had autism. I mean, like your, 
you know, it's like, oh, school, and it was school for the blind, deaf, and dumb. Like, I mean, come on. Like, that was literally a medical term. Dumb was a medical term until like 1972. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it makes, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Hey, so I hope everybody notices this new banner we have. Well, I mean, when you're here, we will have, of course, behind us, there and there. Mm -hmm. so that's weird to do. I feel like I'm a newscaster. Yeah, that's that's what temperature, I'm doing. Temperature today is uh, yeah, 32 degrees. But with expected. Yeah, we have we have a fantastic sponsor. Um, Justin is a state trooper. Yep. That created his own brand of soaps, and all sorts of other random stuff. Um, that's freaking phenomenal, organic, um, delicious. You can see we've got some of the stuff here. Since Ryan's not here, we've got our co-host. <laughs> We're the Patriot Barry. hat. He's chilling. He's wearing his Patriot hat, enjoying himself. Um, he needs a gun, by the way. What's that? He needs a gun. <laughs> I, I know you got it. over here somewhere. <laughs> I don't know if that will get us flagged on, on YouTube or whatnot. But. Yeah, we'll leave it alone then. Okay. Yeah, dude. No, I mean, so um, I, we wanted to, to shout out Patriot. We, I mean, yes, we do every episode. Yes, absolutely. We'll admit that. But the reality is, like, literally, I don't use any other soaps in my house. No. Nope. None. Um, I love their products, man. That's literally the best. And, I'm, and you know, I've been telling people. 100%. And I mean, okay, so the, the soaps come in 5.5, 5, 6 ounces. They last freaking forever. Forever. So, <laughs> like, you buy an $8 bar of soap, and you're like, that's expensive. No, I mean, legitimately, how long does this thing last will blow your mind away. Yeah, I've been using that pine tar one now for a while. And it actually, it's a scent that has grown on me. I, I have one issue with the pine tar, right? So initially, I was like, yeah, I'm not a smoky guy. The cool thing is that the scent in the shower, it's a smoky with almost an orangey mm -hmm. after smell. It's got a citrus note to it. But but it doesn't wear on you all day. Like, like no. you can't smell it anymore. The smoke goes away. It's only in the shower, basically. The you know, citrus lingers, shower, though. Which, which actually speaks to the quality of the product, right? Yeah. My son tried it and he was like, yeah, you don't smell it afterwards. You're good to go. Right. Um, the only thing I don't like is I, I don't like the, um, the brand, whatever it is, the, the oats in it. Yeah. The oats. Sometimes they get a little, I'm a little sensitive skin, you know, so they get a little, little edgy on me. So I just yeah. them off with my fingernail, whatever. Well, that's like, like the, so. uh, there's the spearmint one that's got the coffee in it. I uh, love so that one. The Zero Dark 30, so freaking delicious. And it exfoliates, dude. The Zero Dark 30 is an exfoliating bar with the coffee in there. It's awesome. Oh, man, it's great. The hand cream we talked about earlier, which we flip and love. Like I said, I put it all over my face when I use it. Beard oh, balm. Yeah. I love the beard balm. Hipster yep. repellent is the one I've got. I love it. That's, uh, that's this guy right here, the hipster repellent. I've got the um, the Zero Dark 30, that also. And I like to put it on my on my on this little scruff, mm -hmm. little chin strap area there. But, I mean, they're just they're super good. Um, what makes the product stand out is that literally to make a good bar of soap, it's got to sit for a month. It's got to cure. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. That's why it's so dense and why it works so well. Yeah. You're talking about a high quality product. And the cool part is that, um, there's some, there's some neat things happening down the road with the availability to pick it up at an actual store. Finally, I will, I'll yeah. talk to you about that offline. I, I, yeah, I made a few phone calls. So um, I'm stoked about that. Cause I um, love, I love their product and. Um, yeah. and plus it's all like, you know, I don't want to say it's not, I mean, it's all, there's no like chemicals in it. Like it's all, oh, it's, like, it's organic. if you're a hippie, you'll love it. Yeah. I mean, you're, you'll absolutely love it. Um, but I I'll, I'll tell you later, once it gets in store, I'll tell you where you can pick it up at in an actual store, um, that'll have it on the counter. So you notice it, everybody will, you can get there as much as you want, which is great. Um, you can go to anchored coffee right now was there Awkward because you have to ask, Hey, um, you have the soap. <laughs> it feels weird. I, you don't go to a coffee shop and go, man. I, you know, I, I really just want the soap, right? <laughs> it's it's awkward, but I'm excited. Um, we we have some neat things lined up down the road. Uh, potentially, we will be doing a video for an ad. Love it. I'm writing one as we speak, oh, and man. it's flipping hilarious. <laughs> and the whole goal is to make Ryan feel as awkward as possible. That's usually not hard. <laughs> No, you, 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 it's phenomenal. Dude. I can't, I can't wait because you're gonna flip and love it. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be awkward and, and fun and stupid and everything you want. But no joke, people, go out there, go to patriotmen.com, 
um, get some. Dude, Christmas is right on the corner. Like, I mean, if you're local, their shipping times are still pretty good. I think you have until the 21st, so you can still do express shipping. So, and, and if you're local, pick it up in store. Like I said, if, if we can, I'm pretty sure we can get it going very soon. So we'll see what happens there. Yeah, but uh, they're not, and there's an awesome company, veteran owned. Um, obviously, he just <laughs> here. So if you want back the blue, I mean, you don't get much more, you know, of, of, a, of a solid background as Justin and what he does at Patriot. Yeah. Good guy. All right, so let's let's dig in, man. What makes a family? What? Yeah, I think it's a great. <laughs> this is like, I love this topic because yeah. um, people think that it has to be mom, dad, two and a half kids, dog, white picket fence. And if you don't know, that's what the nuclear family means. Yeah, they came out in like what the uh, late seventies, early eighties when we started using nuclear power as as our prime source because of less pollution and stuff. And and if you didn't know the 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 smoky stuff you see off the top of the nuclear housing steam it's steam it's yep. literally droplets of water being steamed off to keep it cool yeah no my brother-in-law works at a nuclear power plant and i kind of joking they call him homer simpson sometimes but um <laughs> yeah so yeah. Well, plus the the nuclear gosh. family i mean you think about it as the nuclear like a nucleus to where you have mom and dad with the kids kind of radiating around the nucleus um it's a really good answer and i feel retarded now sorry um that's what i always thought Ryan's a smart one <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean it's so like it's it's more bound by <clears throat> bonds, right nuclear nucleus is tied by bonds well what yeah. happens when bonds break right we yeah. think about it is like a nuclear bomb right it's just a and massive release of energy well that happens in divorce a lot too Ooh. um to where there's a massive release of energy and it causes nucleus to split into two different atoms and sometimes the atoms will you know one will go with this one and and you know not to draw pictures but now that we're on video i can actually use my hands to talk like i normally do yeah. um, but you know you have two different families and two different nucleus or nuclei and you know sometimes the electrons around them have to jump from one to the other and things look different so you know what is a family i think family is more of a it's more commitment than it is actual like grouping of people. Like it's like church, right? You think church is being a building, but actually church is people. It is the people. Yeah, exactly. And, and uh, so that's what I mean, in my mind, family, like my family right now is, you know, my immediate family is Owen and I, and, you know, like my extended family or my, my, my family included, like your, whatever you want to call it, like my, my parents, and then you throw them in there, my sister and brother-in-law and their kids. I mean, I can go extended family and throw in like cousins and aunts and uncles and everybody has a, an orbit around this to make it something. And I think everybody has a nuclear family, but it just looks differently. Like sometimes the atoms have split and now there's a family over here and a family over here. And, and that just happens, but that's still a real family. And I mean, like, so the, the reason why this matters is because Christmas holidays, right? You ever, you ever show up at your family's house or, or talk to your family and they're like, man, I really wish you would just, you know, settle down and find a good person and, and, you know, it'd be, it'd be so great. Why are you still seeing family? Like, yeah. And newsflash. I'm, I can actually announce it to you. I don't know if you want me to, but. No, gonna... I mean, you, we can wait. Okay. Let's, yeah. And that's fine. Um, we'll talk offline and, and see yeah. what that. No, that's fine. And like, I, I didn't want to announce something, but like everybody always like says like, why are you still single? Or like, why have you not met somebody? Like, you're such a good person. Yeah. Like you need to bring a nice girl with you or whatever, or a nice boy. I mean, it's like the worst conversation to have though. Imagine being a single mom and having the conversation, even as a single dad, we still dread the conversation. We're like, or like, it's not like we're not trying, although we're not trying. Yeah. And right. And so it's like, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, I just planned on being single again. Like, that was just what I wanted to do. You know, like, that doesn't really necessarily happen. Sometimes it's more of a necessity. And my family was pretty good about it, but you still get those extended relatives, like aunts or whatever, that they they mean well, but it comes out, like, kind of rubs you the wrong way. And you're, well, you're like, you're like, this is my family. What's, what's wrong with what I have? Why do I have to have somebody there also? When we're doing amazing as we stand, you know? Yeah. I think the hard part too is for my, my son, you know, like my cousin's kids, they're, they're close in age and they play together and, you know, they'll ask like, well, where's your mom? You know? And it's not like he doesn't have one. It's just, she doesn't live 
She's not here right now. Yeah, she's not here. Like, yeah, you know, she's not part of this family anymore. She's part of Owen's family. Mm -hmm. She's not part of my family. And it doesn't diminish the value. Yeah, yeah, no, and and like her family, you know, she's got that thing going on there, and mine is where it's at now. And whatever happens down the road, I mean, that can it can change, right? I mean, that's what you can. People will meet other people, or you know, you can remain single and it's okay. As long as you remain a complete person, like you can be a whole person without having the other person there. Like if that makes sense. No. Yeah, totally. And I mean, let, let's be real. Like there are some situations where um, a spouse passes away. Right? right. And you're so attached and so drawn to that person that you just, you don't want anything else. Mm-hmm. And no matter how nice it sounds for somebody else to go, Hey, when will you find somebody new? It doesn't fit the bill. Your heart is, is what's calling and, and your heart decides, you know, hey, do I want somebody else there to fill that spot? Can that spot be filled? Yeah. Right. So we really need to challenge. I think we need to challenge that norm in a major way and go, look, let's define family. Let's, it doesn't mean mommy and daddy and a couple of kids. Yeah. Family is who you hold closest. And that doesn't mean what only, and it doesn't mean mommy and daddy only. Right. You know, and I think it's, and some people try to use like, well, friends are family that you get to choose. And sometimes I feel like that's a cop out to exclude like actual family. Um, and sometimes it's due to like personal decisions or whatever. I think in those situations though, we have to step back and go, okay, not all families are like yours and mine. No. We'll be real. Yeah. There are some horrific people out there. I mean, dude, I know about moms that have taken everything from their kids, literally their sons. No, I know. I mean, I everything, know. right. Yeah. And at that point, yeah, family is who you choose, right? Like Junior's my family. Yeah. Always going to I would mean, consider family. like, I mean, some of my best friends, <clears throat> I mean, I tell them I love them and mm-hmm. I would trust them with everything that I've got. And, you know, tell me somebody else in this world that you would do that with besides family. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's, it would be two in the same. Um, yeah. We don't share the same last name or bloodline or whatever, but I still think that the connection is strong enough that you can consider them family. Absolutely. I agree. But yeah. I mean, it's like, and especially if there's somebody that's not going to come and go, they're not passing through, you know, just to hold a place in time is that there's somebody that's going to stay. And this is all about that. The Medea stuff that, that I posted where we actually, we put on a long time ago. Right. Mm-hmm. And I talked about there are, there are leaves and seasons and sometimes those leaves fall off and they go and that's okay. Yeah. But it's those roots. And so we continually, start building as we age we grow more and more roots to solidify our tree us as the tree in our foundation you know and it's like yeah if you want to use the gardening aspect like you can do with berry bushes where you can have starts right you can literally cut off a branch of certain berry plants and plant the, the branch and it creates its own bush and you know it's like i think family can be that way too like i mean you can branch off like you may not have the other person there, but you can start set your own roots. You can start and build something else too. And mm-hmm. um, obviously the goal, you know, is in my mind for me personally is marriage again. Um, but if that doesn't happen, like I've got no control over that. I got control over what I can do right now and who I find and who my, yeah. you know, if, so if it's meant to be, I pursue it in the right way. Um, but, you know, the one thing that it will always be family is going to be, you know, my commitment to my family. Like I love my parents, I love my sister and my brother-in-law, my nephews, Mm -hmm. and I love Owen. And, you know, like Owen's going to know that they're always going to be there. And, you know, they've shown true to it now that they're not going anywhere. And they've been through a suit some tough times. I have no reservations that that's not going to continue. I agree, man. Yeah. I I totally agree. It's just, I just, uh, I hope, I hope people listening are, are realizing that the question, no matter how good it feels or sounds coming out, is just let it be people we're meant to be together. We're meant for community. Yeah. And that's what family is, is community, right? Yeah. And, uh, and, and we talk about community all the time and constantly. I had a, you know, at church, I got an awesome home group of people that I could call right now. I know of like six people I could call and they would be here within 15 minutes if I needed something. Wow. I mean, tell me somebody that does that. That's family. I mean, yeah, you become family that way. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I think family kind of gets the broad description or they either get really narrowed towards like, oh, family is only your, your last name or bloodline, you know, then there's like the bigger family, right? There's, I mean, oh, totally. 
and I, I, I take the obviously the faith aspect of it, the body of believers, like, yeah, you're in the family there. And, you know, families have arguments too. Families have disagreements. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, you know, I see like the attack in, in society now on the actual family. Like we talked about the nuclear family, um, you know, trying to redefine it and, but redefine it in like a negative connotation. Like it's, you're afraid of offending somebody that doesn't have a nuclear family. So you like have to change the definition of family in order to fit with what they want. You know, it's like, even those people tend to be like isolated anyway. So like, oh, it's okay to, your family can just be, you know, the people that agree with you. It's like, no, no. Like you want people to support you that like thick and thin. Also, They will tell you off if you're wrong too. Mm -hmm. And and they'll do it in a constructive manner. Obviously they're not going to write you off or anything else, but um, no, it's, it's just hard. Like society has such a, such a like narrow scope of, it's got to be this way. And if you're not doing it this way, you're completely wrong. I agree. Totally agree. And it's and, just hard because that's not how family was originally designed to be. I know the biblical design of it. And I think the biblical design carries to even being in a displaced family. Like if you're separated by divorce or whatever, or death, or, I mean, you can, people will come into your life and they'll lift you up. And as long as you've got people that are looking out for you, for your best interest, um, willing to, you know, even if you're wrong, like willing to stand beside you and say like, Hey, you're wrong, but I still love you. But here's why you're wrong. Right. That's how it should be constructively, of course. So I don't know. Like, I think, you know, especially around the Christmas holidays, like people get anxiety about being around their quote unquote, (coughs) because, you know, uncle Donnie voted for Donald Trump or whatever, and they don't, you know, agree with him. So they can't stand being around him to hear him bash CNN and everything else you know, or vice versa, or like, you know, Aunt Sally doesn't want to come to Christmas this year because you're not vaccinated. Um, I mean, say what you will. I mean, like we <laughs> put your swords away, right? I mean, is fam- are you really family then? Like, are you really yeah. best interest of each other? Um, or do you just share the same last name in that sense? Uh, and I think that there needs to be a deeper conversation to find understanding. And I think we're so quick to like, just lose understanding now that we're losing our families because we don't want to understand the other side if we don't agree with it. I think it's a lot, a lot of like these, uh, the, I feel statements, you know, like feelings. I always feel like feelings are, they're okay. Right. Yeah. They need to be checked sometimes. So maybe they'd be addressed a couple of days later, but you know, at the time you're feeling whatever and it's legit because yeah, it's a feeling you're having it. Are they, are they the right response? Not always. Yeah. But you're feeling something. And so you, you kind of respond that way and that's okay ish. As long as you address it later on and go, look, this is, this is really what was going on or how I was feeling or whatever's happening. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think people get too quick to go, Oh, you're, you're, you're upset or you're calling me out or you're whatever, because they don't do it in a tactful way. Yeah. Right. And then family goes, we're not talking anymore because I'd rather not deal with anybody that could possibly sharpen my stone and make me better. I want to be who I am. You know, I'm- you know, I kind of, I think of it in a way of, you know, say somebody comes home for Christmas or whatever, and, you know, one of your family members is just adamantly against it, whatever life decision they've made. And it's just like, you know, they've wrecked themselves based on what they're doing. And so they tell them, well, you're this way and you're wrong and we can't, we can't function now. Mm -hmm. I mean, what does that, like, do to your family basically you're divorcing that person yeah and, and because in divorce in the state of idaho at least i think it's like 90 percent of them it's either irreconcilable differences or extreme cruelty it's one or the other oh wow and you know that so i would say like literally it falls into the irre- irreconcilable differences if you're willing to like lay that person out there over the coals and saying like your decisions or your life is so this that you're not worth love I mean, get out of here, right? Go, I mean, and I, and I hate saying like, go find another family, but I would say like, you know, maybe that person you know, <clears throat> isn't for you. Like they're not for your health. They're not for your life or whatever. And I mean, it sounds kind of trivial to say like, almost like borderlines cancel culture, I guess. Um, 
But at the same token, like I'm all about setting healthy boundaries. And if that person's going to have that, that's not a healthy boundary to have. That's not safe for you. I agree. Yeah. I mean, it's, it just falls down to yoke. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, like, so when we typically people talk about, you know, being of the same yoke or whatever, I don't remember the exact wording of it anymore. I don't know why I just lost it. It's because I'm sick, right? <laughs> but equally yoked, right? Um, yep. Usually people think about that in a religious aspect and it's not. This is about yoking your hearts. If you don't have the same hearts, the same love for people, the same whatever, you're, it's going to be ruined. You can't go through life without having that same feeling. You know, they, um, they talk about it in the biblical aspect, but the example used is, is yoking two oxen together. And if one is unequal to the other, it's going to literally walk in a circle. It's going to pivot around the weaker oxen. Mm-hmm. And they're never going to go anywhere. They're just going to walk in a circle aimlessly until the one on the outside that's trying the hardest gets tired. Yep. And you know, it's the same thing with like what you were saying, sorry to interrupt you, but that's right. It's it's good. No, it is. It really is. It's if you're, if you're trying to find a spouse or somebody that, that you want to spend the time with, you have to make sure you're equally yoked. Your hearts have to be on the same path. And if, if you're super kind and super conscious of other people and your spouse is not, and she's thinking of, of only herself or only whatever, clearly that's an uneven yoke. Yeah. And, and you're, you'll never work it out. It'll never happen because you, you are fundamentally your heart and how you act. And she'll be that way. Also changing people doesn't work. Yeah. I mean, I'm all for obviously taking the approach of like any change in a person is going to have to be intrinsic. If it's not desired from that individual, it's not going to stick. I agree. Um, and so, you know, it's like, why, why does like smokers when their spouse encourages them to quit, why does it fail 85% of the time? It's because they didn't want to do it. The person didn't want to quit. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so, you know, it's like, it's the same thing within, within a family or, or within a relationship is that if the other individual isn't willing to make sacrifices or changes or, you know, give that part of them and and they don't want to do that, then it's just not going to be a good fit. And that's, I mean, I don't want to say that's okay, but I mean, it's like, that's the way it is. Like, I mean, and I'm not advocating for divorce in that sense, but I'm, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is like, you need to try to find the common ground and try to find the understanding because most of those disagreements you can work through. Um, yep. I think it's just, you have to understand where they're coming from in the disagreement. Let's and just I, hope that people listen to this message before they even get to that point, before they yeah. get to marriage and they find someone they can yoke with properly. Yeah. And, and you both can just plow that field together. Yeah. Hmm. Where's the Michael Scott button? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, my bad. I'm sorry. Oh, so I, I guess with that, <laughs> yeah. we'll leave you with that thought of plowing the field. Yes. Um, eat, drink, be merry, and plow. And advocacy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I could have used a couple other holiday adjectives, and I won't now. So. <laughs> Go ahead, man. It's just unload. Oh, ho, ho. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead and sl- slay the bells and all that fun stuff, too. But <laughs> Sweet. Um, well, I, 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 I want to thank our listeners that, you know, like I said last week was, or last episode was our um, kind of our one year season two, episode one. I mean, our kickoff for, for yep. being in this. And, and so, you know, Christmas is a season of, of gift giving and, and being thankful and, um, you know, realizing what you have. Um, and we've got a great gift and, and the people around us that support us and what we do uh, and each other. I mean, I, I got to say, I'm, dude, I'm a, a gift in, in a friend in you and somebody that, you know, is willing to be selfless in how they um, pursue things with this podcast. And you never asked me for anything. And I don't think I've ever asked you for a lot either. Um, other than to just, just sit here and be part of it and be along for the ride and be willing to have a conversation once a week. I think that's what, that's what makes it so real. And, and I, people don't realize that we are raw. This is uh this is not scripted. This is not whatever. We have a few notes about what we want to touch on, but <clears throat> we're raw. This, this is us just being real. Uh, yeah. On that note though, I mean, you know, we're on YouTube now. Yep. We are on rumble, although I, I don't know how much we're doing on rumble, but we're on YouTube. So you can find us there for sure. Yeah. Um, the Advocacy Podcast, of course. Um, we'll put the link out there. But 
give us a like, give us a follow, help us, uh, help us reach more people. I mean, I know we've got a lot of people that, that follow us on, on Spotify. We're still there, but get us, get us on YouTube, reach out, um, help us out. Let's get the message out. Let's, let's help more people. That's what we care about doing. We just want to touch people and not in the wrong way, but we want to, we want to touch people. It's, it's, <laughs> I never came back. It's like it just no when you Smash said that it, like it, button. It reminded me of my uh yeah, of my radio days where it's like continuous soft hits. And I'm like, I always think about it. I'm like a continuous soft hit. Yep. Like, <laughs> Love Ryan and Tristan. Yeah. Um, but no, it's it, the more you support us on on the other platforms and everything, the it, it the bigger the reach this gets. And it, what you know, we talked about the father's right movement is that you know, we want the movement to grow and we're all for healthy things. Um, we're here for healthy parents, moms and dads. And either one reach out. Yeah. I mean, seriously, just follow us, share us. Um, Hit us up our DM. You want to give a gift, give our link as a gift to somebody in messenger and say, Hey, you need to listen to these guys. Oh um, yeah. But no, it's, cool, but, yeah, no, get a like, share, subscribe. You can subscribe now that we're on YouTube. So you can subscribe to the channel. You get alerts when we, when we put new content out there. And um, so, yeah, thanks for our listeners. And it's been an awesome year. Uh, 2021 with what we've done has been great. And we've, we've got one more episode to do this month and, or at least maybe we'll have a new year, I think. Yeah. Because I think we've got a Thursday before Christmas. Yeah. <clears throat> and then the week after, I think we're actually into new year's. Yeah. So uh Sweet. One last episode of the year. That's right. <laughs> so uh, anyways, yeah, for, uh, for the Dad Fixes podcast, I'm Ryan. I'm Tristan and thank you. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Mm-hmm.